like for, for me, the, the kind of the, the day started, well, I'm saying the day started, it was uh, probably back prior in, in Christmas time that I was interviewed by a uh, or chatting to a lady down at the, the Christmas dinner at the BBC. Uh, Angela, the name, and it was funny. We, we got on like a house on fire. And she, we were just chatting about life and, and bits and pieces. And, I, and it was to find out if I was going to be a suitable subject for This Is Your Life. Unbeknownst to me, didn't have a clue what I, She was introduced to me as a former researcher for BBC Wales. So, like I say, she was a lovely, lovely lady. And after that one, it was, it was really funny. I then had another phone call. I was up in Stoke Mandeville training, and this lady wanted to interview me. She said she was from Women's Own Magazine. I thought, what the hell they want to interview me for, you know? But, she, but it was, again, another researcher for This Is Your Life. And so this was going on and on, and then I get a phone call from this uh, lady asking if I would do an interview. She was now supposed to be working for Radio London, asking if I could go up and do uh, uh, an interview for her at Radio London. So I said, yeah, no, no problem whatsoever. So we arranged a date, and this lady meets me. And of course, as we, we start chatting, she met me at Paddington. As we were chatting, she said, <clears throat> John, she said, have you done any radio interviews? Loads. I'm always on radio down at, BBC, down at Radio Wales. So she said, um, this will probably take about 20, 25 minutes, this interview. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I'll never do two minutes on down at Radio Wales. I don't know if I could talk for 25 minutes about how great I am. So anyway, she, this, this lady, Angela, she meets me at Paddington Station. And like I say, we are, we are dri driving along, having this conversation, and I'm, I'm panicking like hell. And... I suppose then she said to me, do you know Henry Cooper? And I said, no, I don't, don't know him, but obviously I know of him because I love my boxing. So she said, well, he's at the studio. She said at, uh, at London Weekend, at um, Radio London. So she said, Henry Cooper will be there. So anyway, when we got up to what I thought was this radio station, it was Thames Television Centre. And it was massive, you know, and I, all I could think of, I'm wheeling through and thinking, radio station, you know. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden, Henry Cooper just appears from nowhere, from around the corner. And he just came straight over me, he said, hello, John Boy, nice to meet you. And I thought, who the hell does he know me? And uh, I'm thinking, oh, they let him know that I'm coming and to make me feel at ease when I do my interview, like, you know, as if a strange and all new. And so, anyway, Henry then looked up, shook my hand, and he said, there's someone else who'd like to meet you as well, Eamon. Well, I looked around and I saw Eamon Andrews with this red book in his hand. All my life, I just thought it was game for a laugh. And I'm thinking, no, this can't possibly be true. It can't, can't, why would they want to make a program on me? There's so many other great athletes, so many other great disabled athletes, and yet they picked me. You know, and I'm thinking, why? And so they, they took us to the theatre then, where it was just, um, where they filmed uh, This Is Your Life. And I can't, I, I can't remember whether we went into the blue room, like at the theatre, where there were this Jack Daniels and some cigars laid out for me. Beautiful room, I was there on my own. I had a couple of Jack Daniels, I will admit to that, but I, I didn't smoke. But we were, we was, I was just sat there waiting for them to take me out. And, and all of a sudden they wheeled me through these corridors and I saw this massive picture of myself. It must have been six foot by four foot. It must have been this huge picture of me. And I, I could understand exactly where they, I was. My nickname was Handsome. As I looked stunning on this picture. <laughs> so I, 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 remember, I remember my sister Sandra coming on, who again sadly is no longer with us. I remember how Sandra coming on. And the way she came over to me, and with tears in her eyes, but pride. And she just put her, and she just, we call it kutch over here in Wales, like, you know, she just gave me this massive kutch. And then my sister Linda did exactly the same. And then I went down, my nephew came on, and uh, we were very, very close, our Nigel. 
uh, Dow, I call him. And uh, but he came on, and, and of course I remember Di and Buzzy and Shades, Chris Allen. They all they all came on one by one, like you know, to to make my life. And you don't need to be a celebrity to have friends and for people to make your life. They made my life. All those people that came on there, and and I loved them all, you know. And, and Uncle Bert and Auntie Alice who brought me up, you know, these were people that made my made me who I was, you know. And to see, then to see the Ponypool rugby players, that gave my life kudos and credibility. I wasn't just this guy in a wheelchair, you know, that did sport, that very few people knew too much about paddle and big sport. But every single one of the Pontypool rugby players came on there. And that was respect. Oh, I think, I think it was perfect. I think it was perfect because what it had was, you know, how I broke my back, uh, having a fairground accident and then going on to, you know, take part in sport. And, and people like in my book there, Ken Wells, I was, I turned into a drunk. And Ken said to me, you know, about training, come down to the gym and train with me. And oh, I thought, how the hell am I going to do that, you know? And so, but I eventually plucked up a courage and he gave me that chance to compete. Steve Gregg, him and I, we competed out in, out in Montreal back in 1979 where he met a Canadian girl, married her and lived out there. So Steve would have been the last person in the world I would have thought would have been on there, on the programme. Because when they introduced him, Steve, I thought they were doing a film from, from Canada. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he came through the doors. Oh, that was wonderful. When we competed all over the world together, I loved him to bits. He was awesome. <laughs> Huge impact at home, absolutely huge. It was all it obviously was on all the, the the local press were picking it up, you know, and local uh, TV and radio. They were all picking up on it. But I had at that particular time, I had a shop, a news agent shop, and I had one lad come in, and it was dead quiet. Jeffrey, the young boy, came in, and he came up to the counter, and he was he was fidgeting and fumbling a bit. And he was looking over his shoulder, looking up and around, you know, and then all of a sudden he said. Uh, can I ask you a personal question, John? I thought, oh my God, where's this one going now? And I said, uh, yes, Jeffrey, what do, you, what do you want to know me? And he said, um, what's it like to be famous and on? This is your life. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. There was, for me, there was no negatives whatsoever. Not one negative came out of having this big red book. And, and that, that book, kind of enabled me, uh, you know, I do go around, I do quite a bit of uh, 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 motivational speaking after dinner speaking, whatever, you know, and a lot of it is down to that, that book that people want to see him and think, whoa, hang on a second, and not always about my medals and what I've achieved sports-wise, but because I've been on this issue of life, you'd be surprised that the, like, oh, a certain generation will look at me totally different. And say, no, I've been on there. You've been on this is your life. No, eyes wide open. Whoa. So you are special, and you're not just that damn bloke in a wheelchair. <laughs> for me, all I'd ever trained for was to be an athlete. I wanted to be remembered as an athlete. I did become world champion. I did have an Olympic gold medal. You know, so I did all those things. That's what I trained to do. And then all of a sudden, Someone decides to put me on, this is your life. And it was one of the most single greatest things that ever happened to me. I was blown away by the, by the whole day, you know, by my whole family and everything that went with it, you know. It was, it was just totally amazing, an amazing day. Amazing day that I was just one of 1,100 people, 1,104 people. It's not bad, is it? It's not bad when you look back on your life and only 1,104 people were on one of the greatest programs ever made, one of the most iconic programs ever made, and John Annis was on there. Well, someone to look back on that. Even now, when I, when I look at that book, and as soon as I open that book, I see all my friends and family on there. That's what makes it as well, like, you know. And I met Eamon Andrews. I was in a car with Eamon Andrews. I was there. Uh, it was all a brief moment, but the time I was with him, uh, I could say, what a gentleman, what a lovely man. It's awesome.
Awesome, Tim.